Hello everyone, welcome to the Ionic YouTube channel. My name is Logan Braid, I'm a developer advocate here at Ionic. Today I have a really fun project for you guys and hopefully what will be the start of a new series here on the Ionic YouTube channel. It's something that I call Out of the Box with Capacitor. The series is called Out of the Box with Capacitor for two reasons. One, I wanna be able to show off uh, projects that you can build uh, using just basic plugins with Capacitor as a platform, but I also wanted to do out of the box projects, things that you wouldn't normally think about using Capacitor for, just to show off the flexibility and creativity that you can have using Capacitor as a platform. Recently, I was digging into the history of Ionic and Capacitor, and I realized that the founding principles of Ionic and Capacitor as a platform actually really mirror the philosophy of makers. So over the past few months, I've been trying to figure out a way where I can honestly pay tribute to maker culture uh, while also showing off um, Ionic and Capacitor as a tool set that could help makers create their projects. And for me as a maker, I've always been interested in the use of technology and storytelling, whether that's the movies that we watch or the video games that we play, or more recently, how major theme parks actually use robotics and animatronics to tell their stories. So I've gone down this path of trying to create my own robotics, and I realized that I came across a really interesting problem with the software that I was using to control these animatronics, and I realized it could be solved with Capacitor. So I went through and I created an application to actually control my animatronics with Capacitor, and I wanna show you the process and how I went through it. Now, is this typically gonna be a project that you might take on on your own? Uh, maybe. But for me, this is more about just showing off how powerful of a platform Capacitor is and all the cool things that you can do with it and how creative you can be with it. Consider this my love letter to Ionic and Capacitor to show off exactly what we can do. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So we're gonna be using a couple pieces of technology in order to accomplish this. The first piece of technology we're gonna use is um, uh, an application called Botango. Botango is what actually allows you to control the animatronics. It's a fully fledged like animation platform that uh, lets you essentially program your animatronics without having to do it directly against the board. The second piece of technology that we're going to use is something called Ngrok. And the reason why we're using Ngrok is because if you try to connect to Botango directly, uh, because of the way that things are set up with the server right now, you'll end up getting cores errors. So this is a technology that's gonna help us bypass the cores errors, but also let us control the robotics and animatronics uh, remotely uh, without having to be connected directly straight to our network. Uh, and then of course, we're gonna be using Capacitor uh, in order to make a cross-platform application that could be used on web, mobile, all that jazz. And then um, of course, for me, like I'm more of an iOS dev, so I'm gonna be using Xcode to show off that process and the build process and actually get it onto my cell phone. I'm using an iMac that was built by a creator named Will Cogley. Um, I did get the designs for the iMac from Will. Uh, and I also used um, some of the things that he recommended in terms of servos. Um, other than that, Hopefully you enjoy it. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing that we need to do is before we go into actually creating the project is that we need to turn on the API for Botango. So as you can see here, I have Botango opened up. I have my actual project. If you're gonna be following along, I'm gonna be sure to include project files for all of this. Um, but in order to turn on the API, in Botango, there's actually a little hardware section over here. If we click on this, um, I won't go into the details of like how to connect this, uh, but you wanna be able to turn on the API. And so at the very bottom here, we have something called API control. You just flick that on, and then there's a port number associated with it. So make sure that you document that port number if you're following along, and uh, we're gonna be using that in Ngrok. The next thing you wanna do is, is download and install Ngrok. And like I said, this is what's gonna help us bypass some of the cores errors for the server that's running. Um, I've already gone ahead and install it. I'll be sure to put documentation on how to install it yourself. And I'm using this command right here in order to set everything up. And uh, you wanna make sure that you have the right port number so that it actually runs through uh, the right area on your local host. So let's go ahead and enable that. There we go, that's updated and running. So let's go ahead and dive into our code. Okay, so there's two main interface portions to this mobile application. There is the actual initial interface where you can get all the animations that you have loaded into Bot Tango and be able to run them. 
And then in the top right hand corner, you can see there's a settings tab. This is a modal that pops up. And in the modal, you have the ability to enter in um, either the local IP of the machine that is running Bot Tango, or in my case, I'm gonna be using um, a web address, that a web address that was created from uh, ngrok, and that allows me to connect to this, um, to my setup remotely. And you have the ability to test the connection to make sure it works. And as you can see, there's a toast controller in the bottom that pops up to show if the connection is successful or not. And then once you actually confirm it, you can see in the top left-hand corner, there's a little kind of Wi-Fi symbol, and that shows you if you can actually animate your animatronic or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk through the capacitor code and show you what I'm doing. Okay, so as you can see here, I have my application pulled up. I'm developing this in Angular and I'll be using capacitor to actually do all the plugin work and get it to be cross-platform. Um, as you can see, there's really only one page and this is what contains the animations list, the buttons, and then uh, it also contains the logic for the modal to pop up to be able to input the settings. Uh, as you can see, I have an ion header here that has all of the details when it goes to, to be cross platforms. And of course we have our content and in the content we have uh, one kind of button set up. And in this one, it's gonna be playing an animation from a list of animations. And it actually populates the buttons from that list of animations when you make the API call. Uh, the next section is all the modal logic. So there's essentially a couple components within the modal. There's um, a cancel button, there's a confirm button. So being able to like open and close the modal based off of the button press, uh, you wanna be able to input data and that data is gonna be an IP address. And I have that tied to an actual ng model, so IP address. Um, and then also a test connection button that will make the API call. Um, then I also just have an information card that's using ion, uh, ion card content. And so that's also built in because I'm gonna be using the Ionic framework to make this look somewhat pretty. And as you can tell, I'm not a designer. So take it with a grain of salt. I just try to get this um, as good looking as possible to be able to control my animatronics. Um, and then of course I have a button at the very bottom. Once everything's connected, you can actually get the animations that'll make the API call and get the details from uh, the Bot Tango server. So let's go ahead and go into our TypeScript component here. Okay, so for this project, I'm mainly using one specific plugin, and that is the um, Capacitor HTTP plugin, because uh, the API that was created for Bot Tango is a REST API. So this works actually pretty well with Bot Tango and being able to communicate with it. Um, and then as far as design goes, I'm using a couple stuff from the Ionic framework. So like Ion, uh, Ion modal, Toast controller, those sort of details. But in the home.page.typescript file, as you can see, we have um, a view child. This is just what's in the documentation for um, Ionic framework. I have an animations list that's currently empty that will be filled once it makes an API call. Uh, there is a default message. I believe I overwrite that default message. <laughs> I think I do. Uh, when it actually can do the connections and things like that. Um, and then there's of course an IP address field, which is tied to user input and then a can animate indicator. And what that indicator does shows if I can actually uh, connect the animatronic and it's available to actually run. Um, oh, actually I'm using one other plugin uh, in order for settings. There's a preferences plugin. Uh, this isn't entirely necessary. I just have it because it makes life easy when, when I'm trying to retrieve details. So I don't have to keep putting in the URL, but we won't talk about that. I'll probably do that in a separate video. Um, the first thing I have here is a get settings thing, a uh, get settings method. And what this get settings method does is it gets the settings using the preferences plugin from capacitor. The next portion is get animation. So as you can see, it loads in my animations list, uh, then makes the eight uh, an HTTP call using the HTTP plugin. So if we go to the HTTP service to get animations, you can see it basically does a basic API call. Um, there is one portion because I'm using ngrok, you wanna be able to skip the browser warnings because it won't return the data that you expect it to return if you don't have that. And then of course the URL that needs, needs to be called uh, in this case, the ngrok URL. 
And then of course the animation string, this is what ties it all together based off of the um, Bot Tango API. So in order to get animations, the animation or the animation string is slash animations. So that's what we're looking for. And then of course we return the, D, uh, the we return the object from the API call that goes back to the TypeScript file, and then we just parse it. So essentially we just load in the animations list and connect it to our empty array of animations. So once that happens, it actually will fill in the details of the animation. The next portion is play animation. So when you click on a button, it'll go to this play animation method and same thing, communicates in a very similar way as get animations, goes to play animation. We'll go to the HTTP service that holds play animation. Uh, this one's a little bit more complicated. I ran into issues when trying to make this API call. So for headers, um, I basically still did the skip browser warning and had to change the content type. Um, and then of course for data, it returns back selected animation name. So like what the animation is, if you're gonna be playing it. In this case, I'm sending is true because we want, or true because we want it to actually play. Um, and then you wanna set at what point does it want to play, like towards the beginning, the end or the middle. And in this case, I just put one millisecond, which shows like the very beginning of the animation. Tried doing zero, doesn't quite work out. It doesn't like that as an input. So I did one and that seems to work out pretty well. Um, it does give you some level of detail and response. So I just return the response that is generated uh, using the capacitor plugin to this API and then return it back to the TypeScript file. The next one is test connection. And this one's a little bit more laborious probably than the first two API calls. And in this one, it's because you there's different states that it can be in. Um, so we do test connection, make the API call to test connection. And as you can see, pretty much the same setup uh, with ngrok skip browser warning and then return, but we actually have to go through and parse it a little bit differently. Um, and so you wanna be able to say like, okay, if the status is 200, obviously you wanna set that you can animate it. Um, there's some response types from the Botango API that even though it might return 200, it might not be in a positive state to actually receive uh, animation. So if like the response you get back is can animate and if it equals false, then you don't wanna obviously try to animate against it because it's not gonna work. And then once that happens, I flip the can animate indicator to true or false. And then on the front end on the homepage, essentially show off, let's see if I can find it here. So in the toolbar, if it's not a 200 or shows false, essentially it'll show that the Wi-Fi uh, indicator is danger, AKA red. Um, and then if it shows with the 200 status and is can't animate as true, then it'll show it as green for successful. Okay, so now that I've walked through the app, let me go ahead and build it and show you how it works. So the first thing we're gonna do is, is um, we're gonna go ahead and build this. So let's do, uh, let's see if we can get it. Okay, Ionic build. And then we're just gonna wait for it to build. Okay, then we're gonna do Ionic cap sync. And what that should do is that should take our build, get it into the necessary files for mobile. Looks like it is syncing. And don't worry if this kind of takes a little while if you're trying to run through it or do it yourself with your own applications. There we go. So it looks like that went. Um, I'm using iPhone. As you can see on my screen, I have uh, my own uh, iOS device connected up. I'm doing screen capture on that. I have the animatronic in the bottom right-hand corner, and then I have me in the top right-hand corner. So there's a lot going on, but I will show off all of these pieces. So let's do uh, Ionic cap open iOS. And what that should do is that should open up Xcode. Make sure that goes through. Hopefully this doesn't bork the recording, but we shall see. I got so much stuff connected in right now. We'll see if it actually records any of this. Uh, yes, here we go. I'll bring this over. Xcode is open. 
It picked up my application. It picked up my iPhone and it's just going through the build right now. Okay, so that is done processing and I have my iPhone connected. Let's open this back up and let's see if it will run. And as you can see, I already have a previous build on my device with it working. It is building. Okay, it's installing. Okay, and let's see, my settings should already be loaded in here. Yes, so I had this on a previous build of the app and it looks like it carried over with my preferences using the, um, the preferences uh, plugin for capacitor. Uh, test the connection again, connection successful. Let's confirm it. And now let's see if we can actually get our animations running. So there's a button here at the bottom, get animations, click that. Cool, so I have three animations set up for this animatronic. I have a surprise animation, a wink animation, and a default animation. So let's test this out and see if it runs. Here is surprised. There it is, We're getting successful notifications out of Xcode. Let's do wink. There we go. And the default animation. That's so cool. Okay, so now what I'm gonna try to do is, and we're gonna, I'm gonna remove the second iPhone app off the screen here, cause I should, well, let me actually hide it. So we'll hide it. I should be able to unplug this. And now because it's running through Ngrok, I should be able to connect it outside of my network without having to be connected. So let's try this. I'll show it on the screen here. Wink. It's winking. Surprised. And default animation. There we go. And that is how I was able to connect my animatronic to a capacitor application. As you can see, it wasn't a ton of work. It was actually pretty straightforward, especially with plugins like the HTTP plugin, the uh, preferences plugin. It just made this project really easy to set up and really only took a few hours to kind of get everything configured. Uh, hopefully you like this project, you found it entertaining. I really wanted to be able to show off um, just more creative things that you could do with Capacitor and Ionic just in general. So if you like this, please be sure to like and subscribe and hopefully you'll stick around. We have a lot of projects like this planned in the future and I hope to see you around. Thanks.